Laryngeal cancers are also very common, especially uh, among uh, smoking people, people who smoke and drink very much. And uh, uh, there are several um, possible treatments, treatment options uh, for these cancers. And uh, the, the main goal here is to try to preserve the organ, to preserve the function, and the function here means breathing, obviously is the most important one, uh, uh, speaking, communicating, voice, and also swallowing, because the larynx is that very, very sophisticated organ, very, very small, but sophisticated organ that uh, interferes in all these uh, functions. On the other hand, you have to uh, preserve the oncological radicality. You have to uh, uh, cure the tumors, of course, because these are cancers that are potentially fatal as well. So, uh, uh, if possible, in early tumors, you can do either radiation therapy or transoral laser uh, microsurgery. Uh, micro, we call them TLM, uh, transoral uh, laser mi microlaryngoscopy. A laser, it's a CO2 laser, it's a very precise tool, so with a microscope the surgeon uh, uh, puts a, 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 a scope on the patient and with the, the help of the microscope and a very, very pre precise and tiny uh, laser beam, it actually, uh, this laser beam cuts very, very precisely uh, the tumor, preserving underlying structures of the vocal cords. And this is very important in order, as I mentioned, to take out the tumor, but to preserve the function, if possible, of the vocal cords. So for early tumors, this is equally effective as radiation therapy, external beam radiation therapy, no operations, but uh, this is a longer uh, treatment. It usually takes about uh, five to seven weeks with daily uh, uh, delivery of uh, uh, radiation therapy is very good as well. For a little bit larger tumors, maybe it offers a better voice. And there are advantages, we don't have time to discuss all the details, but there are advantages and disadvantages of all of them. On the other hand, very advanced tumors, uh, uh, usually uh, in order to treat them properly and to cure, to save the patient's life, uh, sometimes the whole larynx has to be removed. And this is called total laryngectomy. It's a very uh, old operation has been described in 1874 and despite being very effective oncologically speaking it's a very serious mutilation as you can understand because you remove the larynx you keep a permanent uh, tracheostome which is the hole here uh, through which the patient uh, breathes actually uh, no more larynx so the patient eats by mouth normally but breathes through here and uh, loses the, the voice box. So there are tools uh, that you can use, especially some very tiny devices that can connect the trachea with the esophagus and then the patient inspires and compresses here and through this uh, uh, device, uh, he or she can actually speak. It's not a very natural voice, but he, can, he or she can communicate actually. But this is a very, uh, uh, mutilating procedure and obviously the quality of life drops dramatically. Another alternative for the treatment of these very advanced tumors is uh, a combination of radiation therapy and chemotherapy. In uh, different uh, uh, protocols, in different ways, you can use upfront chemotherapy and uh, after that radiation or chemoradiation or the most commonly employed uh, protocol is concomitant uh, chemoradiation uh, for that particular patient with advanced tumors. Uh, what is important, uh, more important uh, than uh, uh, treating these tumors is to tell uh, uh, the lay people that it's important to avoid smoking and drinking because the association of heavy smoking plus heavy drinking, uh, heavy drinkers, uh, this is a very nasty association that increases 
uh, this association 170 times the probability to catch a laryngeal cancer. 